Tibetans are famous for being religious, but where did Tibetan Buddhism come from? Who are the major Tibetan Buddhas? Summer 2017, Metropolitan Museum of Art unveiled an exhibition, Cosmic Buddhas in the Himalayas. The exhibition showcased the highest caliber Buddhist objects from the Himalayas, dating from the 9th century AD to the 19th century, most of them from the museum's own collection. The exhibition is basically organized around the idea of the historic Buddha and his relationship to these heavens, these, the, in a sense, the cosmos. Buddhism started out in North India around the 5th century BC and spread out to the Himalayan region, South Asia, China, East Asia, and the rest of the world. Buddha Shakyamuni was born in North India around the 5th century BC. He was the founder of all Buddhism. He discovered that life's suffering is caused by attachments and endless rebirth on earth. So the goal of Buddhism is to reach enlightenment, to break free of the endless rebirth on earth and to be reborn in the Buddha's heavenly realms. It's not really until the 8th century that we get a lot of Buddhism penetrating into uh, Tibet. And certainly in the 12th century we see the, an explosion of monastic um, establishments in Tibet proper. And it's there that we find Mahayana and later Vajrayana Buddhism becoming very established. A lot of the artworks that we see in this show really reflect both the Nepalese and Tibetan traditions and, and their conception. This small stupa contained the ashes of a monk, which were placed in the center hole. The four carved Buddhas look out on the four directions. According to the Yoga Tantra, Shakyamuni sat under the Bodhi tree. At the moment when he reached enlightenment, his body traveled all the way up to the sky, and he gave lectures for the gods in heaven, and they crowned him and gave him the name Vairochana. Typically, Vairochana is white in color, so we, we know who he is. Above him is the Bodhi tree. Set in that Bodhi tree is a wheel, the wheel of the law, the, the teachings of the Buddha. This 14th century mandala is from central Tibet. The white Buddha Vairochana sits at the center of this mandalic diagram of the heavens framed by the four directional cosmic Buddhas, each with its own distinctive color. The square section takes the form of a multi-tiered palace, with the gates facing all four directions. Along the top are Buddhist deities as teachers, and along the base is a row of powerful protectors. One of my goals in uh, organizing this exhibition, Cosmic Buddhas in the Himalayas, was to, in a sense, simplify what has become so complex and so difficult to access. We have a Buddha that sits at the center. That Buddha, Vairochana, radiates light and is a manifestation of the Buddha Shakyamuni, who lived on Earth. In each of the four directions, we have a different Buddha. Each of them is um, marked by a different color. To the west, at the top, we have Amitabha, Amitabha, for instance, is health and, and the, the potential for a rebirth in, in a pure land. Ikshobhya is associated with power, Ratnasambhava with, with wealth, and Amoga City with protection at the simplest level. I mean, so you start to understand kind of the organization of the subsidiary deities and their relationship to the Buddhas. Vairochana, in the center, is always white. He represents the Buddha Shaktamuni on earth. Buddha in the West, Amitabha, red color for health. Amitabha, for instance, is about health and uh, well-being. And below him is his paradise, Sukhavati, the Western Pure Land. Above him is this wonderful tree that's full of jewels. On the sides, you hear all the gods. They're all flying in mm -hmm. to hear him preach. And below are the eight great bodhisattvas, and here are all of the masses of the reborn. This is the most popular of the heavens because it's where you hope to be reborn. Um, and simply by saying the name of Amida, um, one can be reborn in his heaven. Buddha in the south, yellow color for wealth. Ratnasambhava is always yellow, you know. Uh, for instance, this 11th century, late 11th century image of Ratnasambhava. Uh, he's golden. His emanations, if we look at them, 
um, are deities like Vasudhara, who is a goddess that brings wealth and prosperity. Um, her consort, Jambala, is a deity that is um, in every shop because Jambala brings you wealth and prosperity, makes your business thrive. Buddha in the north, green color for protection. Uh, Moga City on the opposite, to the north, um, is green in color. One of these, the early Buddhist monks came to, to Tibet, Atisha. He has these dreams of green Tara. He venerates Tara in her 21 forms, and she protects you against all possible things. So she protects you against snake bites and war and pestilence. And at the same time, she removes obstacles and helps you reach enlightenment. Buddha in the East, blue color for power, tantric power. Akshobhya, uh, if Amitabha is associated with the setting sun in the west, Akshobhya is with the rising sun in the east. Hevadra is, a, is an emanation of Akshobhya, and Akshobhya is blue, and so we have Hevadra as blue. He dances on a skull on top of a corpse within a ring of flames. He's having sex with his consort Nangmata. They're surrounded by the Dakinis. The Dakinis bring secret knowledge. All this very powerful, and one could even argue ferocious, negative imagery, graveyards, ferocious deities associated with skulls and bodies, but really what it's all about is um, destroying corruption. He's defeating demons, he's defeating real world enemies in a sense, but of course, the world is, is all illusion, so um, in a sense, destroying those things within you that are standing in your, in your way to enlightenment. Unlike other religions, Buddhism doesn't have one book like the Bible or the Quran. Instead, Buddhism has a lot of texts. Since the Buddha lived so long ago, his words about how to reach enlightenment have been lost. I think Buddhism has produced more texts than any religion imaginable. If you fill a monastery full of a bunch of scholars, and they're going to write lots of texts. The Buddha is a human being who reached enlightenment. When one reaches enlightenment, everybody is the same as Buddha, and all representations of Buddha are Buddha. This 10th century image of Mahapratisara is from North India. By having many hands, you can do many things at once. You can hold many attributes. I mean, all the weapons clearly are, are prominently placed. And they're all about cutting through ignorance, cutting through illusion. I'm an art historian who works at the mat. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know? And why do I say that? Because of uh, my past, right? But my past is a mental construction. I only exist in this moment. The future is also a projection. Today, modern Western Buddhism, for some reason, is very interested in Vajrayana. And I think it has something to do with the idea you could reach enlightenment now. <laughs>